In this startup space, everyone is talking about how to generate website with AI, but not yet how to generate proper mobile application with AI. So if you are looking to build a mobile application for your startup, in today's episode, I'm going to show you how you can do it even without any technical skills by just using AI. Hi, I'm Amory, founder and CEO at My City of Friend, where founders come to learn how to build their tech startup. And with this startup snack series available on both podcasts and YouTube, we want to share the essential to make it easier for you to build your tech startup. And building a mobile application has always been very complicated. First with native languages, then with cross-platform frameworks, but it's still very hard to actually create it. But with AI, everything changed. You have now the technical expert to mentor you basically to develop your own mobile application even without any development skills. And we are going to do it right now in two steps. The first steps would be to chat with ChatGPT to basically write down your proper specifications to be sure that what you give to a tool like Windsurf works. And only then we will jump in Windsurf to ask it to basically develop your application. It's like real developers. It's absolutely useless to start coding something if you do not really have a proper idea of what you need to build. And very last step, we're going to check toge together that basically the app is working on both a web interface as an admin back office, as well as on mobile to be sure that everything works and that we can test our new mobile application. So without further ado, let's get on ChatGPT to actually see how I did it already. Of course, I prepared the thing. So I started like quite easily by just describing what I wanted to do. So I, wa I want to use Windsurf. I want basically ChatGPT to help me to create a prompt list where basically we're going to describe the entire things. What I'm going to do, I'm going to share, by the way, these ChatGPT uh, basically uh, chat in the link under uh, the video on YouTube. So if you are interested to get in details exactly what I did, you can basically copy and paste what I just did. So what I like to do usually is to also ask ChatGPT if what I am asking is actually relevant. So that's why I had a couple of chats asking, okay, do you have all the information? Does my process is clear? Are you ready to get started, etc.? It's also allow ChatGPT to know that I am not expecting any result now because sometimes I just like share 10% of what I want and he start to basically summarize things. So it's important to go uh, and one step at a time and be sure that he understands the, the, basically the speed on which you want to build your stuff. So after this first step, I describe this is a chat app that I want to create. Uh, I want to create some channel exclusively. P people are not allowed to speak one by one, etc. So basically, I describe he here what I want to do. I also share what I have in mind in terms of technical uh, frameworks, like I would like to use Expo, Next.js for the admin interface, and also using Firebase and Firestore as a database as well to store information for our users. Again, I ask for some feedback. Does that sound a good technical choice? He confirmed, yes, that sounds uh, great. And then after I was able to move forward, I just added something that is important. It's kind of a technical uh, terms, which is role-based access control. Basically, this is a framework that allow our users to be part of a specific role and have some specific authorization on the application based on that role. It is great to have this foundation on any app, web or not, so that actually uh, you, uh, you have an application that can evolve over time and you can add features without having uh, uh, headaches adapting things. And that's basically what ChatGPT conf uh, confirmed. He said, okay, now I have more details to ask because that's basically what I asked. Uh, what aspect of the specifications are missing? And then he covered all the technical points and description points he wanted answer on. And what I did, because it's a long list, uh, I did, okay, let's reply one by one. And then I replied to the first one. For user management, for now, we ju are just going to do email and password, blah, blah, blah. For the number two, for the admin, it's going to be very simple. Uh, they can allow users to be attached to a specific channel, etc. And I replied one by one to all the points, basically, he mentioned and on which he needed some uh, things, basically, for the social media interactions. I said, you know what? Don't reinvent the wheel. Use exi existing frameworks, use existing libraries to basically have a classical uh, social media interactions like we have on Facebook and WhatsApp, or WhatsApp, I mean. And same thing for the rest. 
uh, characteristic of messaging, can we delete things, etc. So basically, I answered one by one to all the points, uh, and that led me to have my specifications done. Uh, can we use the application offline or not? I did not even thought about it on the beginning, and that's actually a, a very common issue on, on mobile application. So definitely, uh, that's great to answer this type of questions and to describe what will be the behavior of the application. Same thing for the admin back office. What type of uh, feature do we want? I want something very easy. Uh, and then after, he asked for the analytics. Again, apply best practices by reusing existing libraries or frameworks. If we can easily get this data, I am up for it. If it's complex, let's postpone. Always guide the chat GPT and the developers to make things very simple. And same thing, either it's an AI or if it's a real developer, ask them if they have a way to do it very easily. Otherwise, let's postpone these type of things. He asked me a couple of questions of the security compliant. Um, nothing fancy, just if I want to launch the application in Europe. So basically, I am based in Europe, so I said yes. Uh, and again, keep things as simple as possible. Uh, scalable, I said, yeah, we're going to handle a few thousand users. Honestly, I think it's, it's uh, with the type of technology that I chose, it will be easily a few ten thousands uh, without any ch changing anything. And last for the UI UX consideration, thanks uh, to my brand, I just dropped here the colors that I wanted to have. And for the rest, I said, you know what? Use classical CSS libraries like Bootstrap, which is quite known. And these type of interface, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. There are tons of users, tons of people who created these basic applications and, uh, and design system, just reuse what exists. And he said, okay, let's use uh, this type of things, etc." So here we are almost done. Yes, please create the prompt list, ensuring that you keep all the important details that we covered in this session. It's important because on previous ones, sometimes I ask him to create a prompt, uh, a prompt list and ba he basically summarized a lot of things and we lost like 80% of all the details that we covered. So it was very important to not notice that and to ask him to choose properly the prompt order uh, so that the AI developer can actually build the app one step at a time. So he almost did it. Uh, the thing that I found that was not really adapted was the prompt number one, which in fact contained a lot of things. So especially for the prompt number one, I do recommend to do exactly what I just did uh, at the end of this one. I said, okay, sounds good, for, but for the first prompt, sounds too broad. So can you please split it in three or four prompts to ensure that Windsurf AI development tool will actually build things the proper way without any initial bugs or misconception? And that's what he did. And that's basically how I, how I got started on Windsurf. That's it. And here we are. So I went directly on Windsurf. So again, I created an empty directory. It, there was absolutely nothing here. And I, I edited nothing except uh, the, the token. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do it of my Firebase. So basically, this is the connection of the database. So, and, and to do that, I had just to follow the instructions. So basically, I copy and paste uh, the first prompt that has been generated uh, here by uh, the thing. Of course, I always read and see if there is anything to adapt. Um, and yeah, basically document how to uh, do the setup of the environment, etc. That's great. And basically, he did the thing. He created directory. The project is ready. So he showed me how I can run basically the mobile application if I want so. Uh, and then after, he wanted to initialize the, 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 the admin. So sometime, here I had a, a small issue. Sometime he will execute things. And, uh, and on the command, he asked for a question. And here, WinServe do not handle properly when some questions are asked. So basically, he was not performing these things. So to be honest, I had to just copy that command line and I had to execute it in the terminal. It was the only thing that I had to copy and paste in the terminal, uh, as far as I remember. And then after, I got tons of descriptions of the application. So what I am used to do is to copy and paste this type of information. And I like to create kind of a small documentation where I gather all the things that are important so that at some point, I will be able either to use it by myself or to share it with some uh, developers because you might need at some point some professional developers to review the code that are generated on AI. Even if it's crazy, if I am very excited with all these technologies, I do not believe that we can create 
100% of a full web mobile application without a tiny help of the developers. You can reduce, reduce by at least maybe 10x uh, the, the, the cost of a mobile application, but a proper professional might be required just to re review things. So um, here, basically, that's what I just uh, did. I copy and paste information and I was able to launch things. So basically, I launched the application on the web. So I follow the things he generated, blah, blah, blah. Uh, install, yeah, sometimes he try to launch the application and say, oh, I forgot to install things. So he installed it automatically. Nothing fancy. Ah, uh, yeah, at some point I had to ask, okay, I need now to create uh, the Firebase setup. So I ask some details and here the details were very, very broad. So instead of asking to windsurf, I went back to ChatGPT uh, and basically I said to ChatGPT, okay, great. I am on this step. But he requests me to set up Firebase. I have no idea how it works. I try to do it, to do it this way. And I need more details. And here is what he asked me to do. And basically, he gave me the steps. Okay, in details, you go on that screen, you do this, you do that, etc. I can show you exactly what this process looks like. Basically, I went on Firebase. Uh, I had to create, uh, I think it was an authentication. Yeah, sign up method. I did set up sign up method. I clicked on email password. Sorry, it's a video of what I did. I enabled, saved, boom, that was it. It was the first thing that I had to do. And the second thing that I had to do afterwards was to actually generate uh, the, um, the email. So I went on Firestore database. I don't even remember because I just followed the instructions basically. And uh, uh, here I think I was, yeah, create database, boom. I've put a name of the database, I set it up in Europe. Uh, yeah, I've put a name. No, I think I, I kept it in production in the end because I, I didn't want it to put my, my database open to the world. Anyway, even if I dropped it since then. Okay, great. Ah, I was definitely hesitating. Uh, okay, so I went there, that way. He created my thing and boom, that's it. And after I had to copy and paste the rules. Eventually, these rules was uh, not the proper one. Um, and what I did every time I had like I had sorry I went too fast. Uh, every time I had a doubt, you know, I ask. Okay, uh, so basically gave me all the information that I needed to do, and uh, that's what happened on my video. Huh, by the way, if I go back on uh, on my proper video, he gave me all the uh, credentials that I needed to set up. So what I did, I just opened both, and one at a time, I just did copy the information from what I had on Firebase website to my uh, .env file that has been mentioned in the chat. It was the most technical part of that project because we have to link basically the mobile application and the web application with the Firebase. Once we are done with this, everything else is easy. Um, and that's it. So once I did it, I was able basically to uh, yeah, but that was on, that was it for this video. And I was actually able to launch my application. So basically, uh, either you ask to the windsurf to launch your application or you can go back on the model that they gave us. And I think it was uh, NPX uh, run uh, dev, something like that. And, uh, and basically, it gave you the URL on which you can find uh, your uh, app. And uh, oh, here, this is the mobile, but just above it, must have been the application and uh, that's pretty much it. When I launch it, yeah, here it is. I did yarn start, sorry, yarn start. And he said, okay, it's open on this port. So what I did is opening uh, basically my browser and I went on the port that he was mentioning at that time. Uh, it was not, no, this one is for the mobile application. But anyway, you understand the point. It launched my application. I just had to click on the thing and, and that's it. Basically, I can do add, uh, test data and basically fetch test data and boom, it uh, basically takes things from the database. This is a web application on which we can build things. So now on the prompt, I can ask, create a menu on the top left-hand corner, do this, add this feature, etc., etc. And for the mobile application, same thing. We need to use a technology called Expo. So Expo is amazing because with Expo, we can basically scan the QR code that is displayed on the chat. So on the chat, I had this QR code with, on which you, you've just seen. And he downloaded the application right from my computer. 
and boom, I have my test application directly on my mobile. And I can do the same feature at test data, fetch test data. Everything works the same way. So this process that I just show you was used to take one full day of a developer, experience one, maybe sometime even more. And now we can do it in one or two hours, tops without any technical skills. And this is the foundation to build any type of mobile application, everything you might think of. It really changed the game for the start startup world. No need to raise capital, no need to uh, spend exp expensive amount of money in agencies to hi hire developers, etc. You just need to have the proper prompt to build 90% of the application, 80% minimum. Again, try it, do pro proper copy and paste if you get any error and drop it in the chat. You might be able to develop most of your application. I said most of your application because of course at some point if you push too hard on certain things, you will need some technical guidance and that's basically why we are here for. Because AI makes mistakes, humans make mistakes and you might need at some point some expert to analyze very precisely what the AI generated for you. And by the way, that's why at my CTO friend we are about to launch a new service called Your App Coded by AI. Basically, we coach you to build the proper prompt and we provide you with the experience we have with building startups and we also have experienced senior developers that are trained to use windsurf and ai and in a at lightning speed they can review everything that is generated with your ai and help you ship your product into production and then to your users so in the end you can team up with an ai developers plus a real senior developers to produce an application web platform whatever you want at like 10x less than it was used to. It's really innovative and we are essentially offering uh, something that could cost like 50 k to maybe a few thousand now. It's just crazy. So if you're interested, just contact us on mycitofriend.co. We are opening the first spots. It's a very special early bird offer for the end of the year. So I'm looking forward to catch up with you. And yes, definitely AI is changing everything. We encourage you to jump head first learn, do things by your own. I want you to test things and to, to uh, just evaluate uh, how complex it is and just to see the last mile where we can definitely help you. I hope you liked this episode and this video. Uh, of course, I plan to do even more during the upcoming weeks. So feel free to drop your comments below, your questions if you have, or to share whatever things you have about your project. I look forward to read your comments. And until then, take care. See you on the next one.